It's June 2nd, 2011. Game two of the NBA Finals between the Dallas Mavericks and the Miami Heat, for whom victory has long seemed inevitable. And yet, with just seconds on the clock, Dirk Nowitzki has a chance to break a tie, to put the Mavs ahead and on the verge of stealing home court advantage. Before Dirk gives it a shot, we should remember what this moment represents, what he's up against, and what this could do for his complex legacy. We need to rewind. The Mavs have the opportunity to do something novel. Beat these guys at home in the playoffs. These guys, specifically. Sorry, Mario Chalmers and Udonis Haslam, not talking about you this time. This summer, in case you haven't heard, marked the formation of a new Big Three. Three top five picks from the 2003 draft. Three decorated Olympic and all-star teammates. Three guys who, technically speaking, all received 2010 MVP votes. Dwayne Wade had already cemented his place as the superstar who helped bring the Heat their first championship. He re-signed with Miami. Chris Bosh, one of the best big men in basketball, a five-time All-Star, grew tired of languishing on the mediocre Toronto Raptors. He joined the Heat in the sign-and-trade. And then LeBron James signed. The best player in basketball right now, winner of the last two MVP awards. In 2010, these guys had each been their team's best player. Now they all played together. The victory lap began immediately. The arena party, the lights and flames, and yes we did. The arrogance is, well, justified. Yeah, Miami had a bad first month of the season. Yeah, there was some gossip about Coach Eric Spolstra and LeBron bumping into him and whatever. Players only meetings, that kind of stuff. No one remembers that shit anymore because it's the postseason now and Miami has eaten everybody. The Sixers' solid defense crumbled in five games. The Celtics, reigning Eastern champions, went down in five as well. The Bulls, led by youngest MVP ever, Derrick Rose, five games. Miami's romp through the East included nary a loss at home. They are 9-0 and in this building. And it's not just that the Heat wreck shit at home, it's how it looks and feels. The big three come at you like a tidal wave. It doesn't even take all three of them to overwhelm you. In finals game one, for instance, Bosch was ice cold, but James and Wade combined for a super efficient 46 points. When Dallas helped, those guys just kicked out to Mike Miller and Mario Chalmers for open threes or pounded the glass for putbacks. These guys go on runs that'll make your teeth chatter. Bosch has actually been even worse tonight, but Wade and LeBron have commanded a couple torrid scoring runs that had Mike Breen just kind of shaking his head. The Miami Heat, it's like they change gears and you don't have an answer for them. Their latest onslaught was a 13-0 run to begin this fourth quarter. With just over seven minutes remaining, Wade buried this three, then posed in front of the Dallas bench as the crowd embraced a 15-point lead. Green smelled doom. A 13-0 run, and Miami in control with 7-14 remaining. And who could blame him? This lead, with this little time left, it was game over. And honestly, series over. Of the last 16 teams to take a 2-0 finals lead, 15 finished the job. Which brings us to the Mavericks. They are the 16th team in that stat I just mentioned. Five years ago, in 2006, Dallas held a 2-0 NBA Finals lead over these very same Miami Heat. Well, not exactly the same. LeBron and Bosh weren't on that team, but Shaquille O'Neal was. Shaq retired today. But yeah, the Mavericks squandered that 2-0 lead and blew the 06 Finals. Ever since, they've been fighting to avenge that devastating Finals outcome. And the Mavs are a resilient bunch. This team in particular embodies the spirit of the comeback. This season's lineup weathered some hits. Dirk Nowitzki missed a couple weeks with an injured knee. Starting small forward Karan Butler went down with a season-ending injury in January. These Mavs lost six straight at one point, their worst slump in over a decade. Then they turned around and won 10 straight soon after. 
And here in the playoffs, comebacks remain a theme. Digging holes of despair, then climbing out. Dallas blew a 23-point lead and lost Game 4 of their first round series against the Blazers. The stench of upset filled the air. Then, Dallas won 7 straight games to close out that series and the next one, a conference semifinal sweep of the Lakers. Of Dallas's 12 playoff wins to date, 4 included a 4th quarter comeback. Just 10 days ago, Dallas was in deep trouble. Kevin Durant's 3-pointer gave the Oklahoma City Thunder a 15-point lead with 5 minutes remaining in Game 4 of the Western Conference Finals. Dallas stared down a potential 2-2 series tie. But Sean Marion's block on Durant punctuated a rally to force overtime, in which Dallas seized the victory to go up 3-1. Even their closeout Game 5 against OKC included a little fourth-quarter rally. So if any team was going to find a way to dig out of this hole, down 15 with 7 minutes left against an opponent known for suffocating fourth quarters, preening in front of their home crowd, well, it would be the Mavs. The rally that pulled this scoreboard even began because Dallas star Dirk Nowitzki kicked out of help defense. To a Jason Terry jumper, to a funky Sean Marion banker, to a Jason Kidd three that cut the deficit to six, to hockey assist, another Terry bucket that made it four. The man who calls himself Jet was crucial to this comeback. But the final hump, those last few points, belong to the man with the ball right now. Nowitzki handled the clutchest assignments himself. Narratively speaking, this is meaningful. There was a time when Dirk was appreciated as kind of a novelty. The Mavericks made a 1998 draft night trade for this gigantic, lanky German dude who, get this, could hit three-pointers. But around the time Mark Cuban bought the franchise and Steve Nash grew into a star point guard, Nowitzki broke out as much more than a novelty. A multi-zone, multi-purpose, all-star scorer who, at seven feet tall with precise footwork and a buttery touch, presented a matchup nightmare. Nowitzki became an all-star at age 23. He took over first option responsibilities from Michael Finley. At the same time, Dallas's playoff runs met disappointment. Then Cuban let Nash walk to the Phoenix Suns in 2004. Don Nelson stepped down as head coach late the next season. But Dirk, it turned out, could lead the way. Dallas finished with 58 wins in 05 with Avery Johnson taking over full-time and a deep supporting cast surrounding him, Dirk led the Mavs to 60 wins in 06. The Mavs vanquished their rival Spurs in a seven-game playoff series, then upset Nash's shorthanded Suns in the Western Conference Finals behind a near-flawless Dirk performance. He dropped 50 points in one of those victories. In the finals, Dallas took that 2-0 lead over Wade, Shaq, and the Heat. In his eighth season, Dirk approached the threshold of that legacy-defining title. He would be the clear-cut leader of an NBA champion. Instead, he headlined that notorious collapse. It was Dirk who missed a critical free throw and turned the ball over in the final seconds of a close game three. It was Dirk who shot a hideous 2 of 14 in the blowout game four loss. Dirk committed the foul that allowed Wade to hit the free throws that won Game 5. Miami ended up winning it all in 6, leaving a cloud over the heads of Dirk and company. But then 06-07 came along, and the Mavs looked more than ready to blast that cloud out of the sky. They shattered the franchise record by winning 67 games. Dirk elevated his shooting percentages and assists to make his sixth straight All-Star appearance. It was a spotless individual campaign, until one big ol' spot ruined it. Those Mavericks made ignominious history, becoming the first one seed ever to lose to an eight seed in a best of seven series. The super small, fast-paced Golden State Warriors, coached by Dirk's old mentor, Don Nelson, humiliated the Mavs. Nelson sent fronts and double teams at Dirk, who failed to overcome them. He averaged under 20 points a game on some soggy shooting percentages, including a miserable 2-for-13 outing in the fatal Game 6. 
Dirk could only partly enjoy the honor of becoming the first European NBA MVP a couple weeks later. Even as Dirk continued to sparkle in the following seasons, more Dallas disappointment threatened to define his legacy. In 2008, Chris Paul and the Hornets easily slapped Dallas out of the first round. 2009 marked the first full Dallas season for point guard Jason Kidd and coach Rick Carlisle, but when Carmelo Anthony's Nuggets beat Dallas in the second round, headlines focused on Dirk. The TNT guys went in on the Dallas star because he'd made some complimentary comments about Denver. I, I don't know. This legacy stuff is caked with macho bullshit and dubious comparisons, but legitimate or not, it's sitting there. Not clutch, soft, not a winner, good but not great, all that. In 2010, while the Miami Super Team was forming, Dirk quietly re-signed with the Mavericks. People weren't all that excited about Dallas this year. They entered the playoffs a sharp but underhyped three seed. Fine. Dirk was sensational in a first round win over the Blazers, capping the series with a 33 point, 11 rebound masterpiece in game six. He led the way once more in that astoundingly lopsided second round sweep of the Lakers. The Mavs conference final defeat of the Thunder was closer than the five game outcome would make you think, but Dirk nonetheless outperformed all of the Thunder stars. He set the tone with 48 points in the game one victory, then finished the job by burying a huge late three and two critical free throws to seal game five and bring Dallas back to these finals. Dirk, as ever, will tell you he just wants to win. It's not about correcting his individual legacy. But this second crack at an even mightier version of the Heat presents an opportunity. As we've discussed, that opportunity has appeared out of reach. Miami not only romped in game one, but fucked up a finger on Dirk's left hand in the process. He's played all of game two wearing a splint, and while it doesn't seem to be affecting him that much, he started off shooting terribly. Dirk was just three of 10 in the first half and missed six straight shots over a period extending into the third quarter. Seven minutes ago, the headlines were writing themselves. But then Dirk calmly picked apart double teams to shrink the lead. And once it got close, he took over. Dirk picked and popped the left elbow to cut it to two. A flurry of Miami misses and recoveries generated this leak out, which Dirk finished with his busted left hand. With under 30 seconds to go, Dirk slipped behind a Chandler pin down and miraculously gave Dallas a three point lead. What a rally. A 20 to two run, one of the most incredible comebacks in NBA Finals history. But we are tied now because Coach Spolstra drew up a tidy inbound set to let Mario Chalmers sneak free of the Mavs defense. Corner three, tie game. And now it's Dirk. Single covered by Bosch with just a bit more time on the game clock than the shot clock. Dirk has an injured left hand. He has in his wake three quarters of rough shooting followed by one quarter leading yet another Mavs rally. He's got a lot of critics insisting he's not built for moments like this one. And if he and the Mavericks can't finish this rally, He's got little hope of overcoming a 2-0 deficit against this overwhelming super team. Dirk has to make the most of this chance. Then he's probably got to get back on defense. Welcome to a moment in history. Seven to shoot. Nowitzki drives with the deep lefty layup. Banks it in with 3.6 remaining. Miami out of timeouts, trailing by two. James back to Wade. Wade puts it up for the win. Off the mark, and Dallas has tied the finals. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Rewinder. You can check out some more Mav stuff or a little more Rewinder over here. 